So just to review, you know, we started off solving 1D pressure diffusivity equation for isotropic homogeneous systems. So we also call that the heat equation. But before we made the simplification to get to this guy, uh, and and including the um, the control volume stuff we've been doing, where we had heterogeneous reservoir, whether you knew it or not, this is what you were solving. This PDE. So this is what we've been solving when we've been ever since we've been doing heterogeneous systems. So now, you know, the the permeability can be a function of x. So you take, you know, what's inside the, the braces or parentheses there is the flux. So from the mass balance, we have the divergence of flux. And then we substitute in Darcy's law. So but because k is a function of x, then that derivative has to stay on the outside. Right? So the equation at the top is a simplification of this one. But this is what we've been solving since we started looking at heterogeneous systems. So uh, what we're going to solve now in 2D, and we wrote it down earlier in the class, is this guy. So now we have an additional term. So you see the first part is identical, and then now we just have this second term, which includes the new spatial dimension y. There is an assumption in this. What is it? There's an assumption in this equation. So we're, we're here we, we allow for the fact that it is heterogeneous. The k's are inside the derivative, right? It's also anisotropic because we have two Ks. Right? But there's one more assumption here that we haven't removed or included before. It is, this is an aerial reservoir. Right? We're in the sky looking down at it, looking at fluid transport in the plane of the Earth. Why? Because there's no gravity. So, so we could also work a 2D problem as a side view. Like if I, if I cut the earth in half and looked at the side of the reservoir, and we looked at transport in that plane, then we'd have to include effects of gravity even in a 2D problem. Right? But here, this is an aerial view. And that's all we'll do in, in this, uh, you know, in terms of what we're going to code up and work ourselves. Of course, when we get to CMG, it'll have that in there. Okay? We also won't, uh, you know, code up a 3D problem, but the extension from 2 to 3D is very simple. But just understand, you know, so the extension from 2D to 3D is now you just have another another term is identical to that except the y's are z's, right? And you have to include effects of gravity. In a 3D reservoir, you're always going to have gravity, right? So you'd have a potential term inside that derivative that would be like rho gc, right? plus rho gc. Right? So this is an aerial, this is what we call an aerial. So we know how to do finite differencing. We could just make our finite difference substitutions for those derivatives, and we can derive the discrete equation. We also know this control block approach, and we could do it that way. Do you guys have a preference? Finite differences versus control block? You get the same equations, right? 
Or you just confused about both of them? Okay. So my preference actually is my preference is to use the P start with the PDE, right? And the reason I have that preference is because you know, the PDE is the physical equation, and I don't have to. You know, if I'm smart enough, I could solve that analytically, right? Sometimes. Then I have varying heterogeneities, whatever. Then I can't solve it analytically. I have to go to a computer. But then I get to make the choice. If I have the PDE, I get to make the choice about my discretization. I can use finite differences. I can use finite volumes. I can use finite elements. I'm a finite element guy, so if, if, if you know, I would, I would probably, really, if I was really going to solve this for my own interest, I would use the finite element to solve this. And we're not going to discuss that in this class. It's a little more, it's more difficult than what we're doing. Okay. Uh, the control volume approach is, in fact, a finite volume approach. It's just derived a little bit differently, and we're imposing the discretization at the beginning. Right? So we, d we derive the discrete equations without the PDE, essentially, when we do the control volume approach. Right? And it turns out they're only equivalent because our control volumes are perfect rectangles, meaning they're only, they're only equivalent to the finite difference approach because our control volumes are perfect rectangles. The finite volume approach is general enough that it could handle irregular polyhedral, and then in that case you wouldn't get the same exact, the same uh, as the finite difference. But for what we're doing here today, whether we were to take the PDE and use finite differences, or we were to use the control volume approach, which is what we're going to do, you're going to get the same set of discrete equations. What I'm writing here is for an implicit number. And those discrete equations are identical to what we had before. Right? There's, no, there's no difference in the structure. The difference is actually only in the structure of the matrices. So now all of the information on the 2D reservoir will be included in this. Okay. But in terms of how we solve this, I mean, this is a matrix that we invert and multiply by that to get Pn plus 1, which is how we construct T and B that differ in Q. Okay. 